Today's feature have a love story and a start story that's one for the books. Pastry chefs turned entrepreneurs, this couple has managed to meld two worlds into one delicious suite of products in the form of the Pure Chocolate Company. Let's meet Walter Chertes, the co-founder of the Pure Chocolate Company. Walter, welcome. Thank you. Cheer Jess. Almost right, Cheer almost test. right. You promised me you wouldn't stumble, but you did it anyways. <laughs> Cheer Tess. Very good. Cheer Tess, very good. Creator of Pure Chocolate Jamaica. Right. Right, so how did you start, Walter? I know you have a fantastic story, something like, <laughs> something like a movie. Right. Tell me more. So, 2008, uh, I landed in the Caribbean, mm -hmm. in Curacao. Started moving around a bit. Um, ended up in Jamaica where I met my wife, mm -hmm. Renee and fell hopelessly in love. <laughs> um, we moved around a bit. Uh, we went to Curaçao, mm -hmm. ended up in St. Lucia, okay. where we learned how to make bean to bar chocolate. Okay. Uh, that oh, hold on. How did you get to bean to bar? What, what, what do you guys do? Who, who pops up and says, let's go to another country and learn how to make chocolate? So being pastry chefs, yeah. um, you, the Caribbean is a small place. Everybody knows each other. Mm -hmm. And people were happy with what I was doing, so I got asked to come and, and, and support a project in St. Lucia. Cool. So there was a tiny little hotel there that had a large farm with cocoa trees and they didn't know what to do with it. Mm. So they said, you know what, you're a pastry chef, you must like chocolate, come and figure this thing out. <laughs> okay. So they really threw me in the deep and said, well, make chocolate from the trees over there, from the cocoa fruits. Okay, had you ever made chocolate before? No, oh. not like that. Okay. Normally pastry chefs buy chocolate in bulk, mm and then just make products out of it. Right. So it's, it's really unique for that hotel to say, you know what, we're gonna try to make our chocolate from scratch and mm -hmm. use that, mm -hmm. which we did successfully. So back then, I learned everything I needed to know to make, to make bean to bar, or actually tree to bar chocolate. Tree to bar from chocolate. the tree, from the fruit mm -hmm. to a chocolate bar. Mm -hmm. um, learned there, got the knowledge. We moved to Curacao because you know, um, um, as expats and as traveling family, yeah, you want to see as much as you can. So right. we ended up in Curacao and then we had our boy um, and, and, and trying to raise two boys on the move isn't the best thing. So we decided, you know, it's time to come home. Mm. By that time, home is, of course, Jamaica. Jamaica, yes. So we came back three years ago mm -hmm. and coming back, coming back, we knew that Jamaica has one of the top cocoa beans in the world. Yeah. And it was very much underutilized. A lot of it was just sold in bulk overseas. Um, and didn't feel right. So we, we said, you know what, we have the knowledge to do tree to bar. Mm -hmm. Let's try to do it. The cocoa industry in Jamaica was actually quite dwindling. There was, there was a lot of farmers chopping down their trees and starting to plant other crops because they weren't getting the returns that they were hoping for from copo, cocoa. Mm -hmm. And uh, we got lucky. We, we got in contact with one farmer up in Portland, mm -hmm. Mr. Bodie. And we convinced him to wait with chopping down his trees until we came and could at least talk to him. So the day that we landed in Jamaica was on my birthday. Mm -hmm. We, okay. it was fantastic, <laughs> really, yeah. It was on my birthday that we landed. We immediately drove up to Portland. So you can imagine, drop your bags, you land, you drop your bags, get in a car, go up to Portland because we needed to talk to this farmer. We needed to convince him not to chop his trees, mm -hmm. which we did. So he said, you know what, I'm going to give it a try. Let's see how it goes and take it from there. So now you need to imagine that we come back here in Jamaica. We didn't have anything. Mm -hmm. I took a job in the hotels to, you know, pay yeah. the bills. Yeah. And in the meantime, Renee started setting up a company from scratch out of our living room. So now here we are with a deal with a farmer, with a bunch of cocoa beans. We right. didn't have machines, nothing yet. Right. Cocoa beans piling up in the living room and in the living room. eventually, literally, literally okay. in the living okay. room. Mm -hmm. um, but that's really how it started. And then over the next two years, it develops. You, 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 you save up a little, you buy a machine. So you save up a little more, you buy the next machine. I, I, I wanted to, um, you like hopped ahead because there's so many things <laughs> that are coming out from your story. You said you literally, have you ever had a business before? Is that something that you've ever done? Um, 
back in the days you try a thing or two but okay. doesn't not as serious as this no formal kind of okay no we're really just figuring it out so how did you make that decision so both of you are pastry chefs both of you have traditional jobs like how what is that discussion like like we're going to do this we're gonna get cocoa beans we're gonna you know be saving up to buy machines so discussion as it is i would say born out of frustration mm. okay why frustration because because you know you're working a nine to five mm -hmm. and as chefs in the hotels it's not even a nine to five it's mm -hmm. a nine to whenever you're finished yeah whenever, whenever. 12, 12 hours right. a day and just six six days a week and right. you know that takes its toll mm -hmm. Um, yes, you have a passion for what you're doing, but you, you, you know deep down inside that you can do more. And we both had that feeling. Mm -hmm. And we had the knowledge. Right. And we knew that Jamaica has good cocoa. Mm -hmm. So you said, that's where we said, you know what, we're just going to start really small scale mm -hmm. and see where it grows. Mm -hmm. And well, this is where it grows. So what was that? For, so you created your first batch and how did you get it out? Who were your first customers who were, you, you, you tested it on? That's actually a really good um, uh, uh, question. The mm. first customer, the very first person who tasted our cocoa bars, yeah, our chocolate, the first couple people, yeah. was the farmer. Oh. Because Mr. Bodhi, it's a little bit of a sad story because Mr. Bodhi had been farming for, uh, cocoa for 25 years, right. but wow. never tasted his own cocoa. Which is sad. Yeah. I mean, it, it's kind of like having having a, an apple orchard and you never taste you an apple. Never taste it makes apple. no sense at right, all. So, right. the first thing we did again is mm -hmm. once we had the machine mm -hmm. and grinded our first batch, mm -hmm. race back to Portland and say, <laughs> "All right, Mr. Bodie, <laughs> yeah. here's your chocolate." <laughs> Mr. Bodie literally got tears in his eyes. He says, "This is fantastic." Yeah. We didn't even have the packaging yet. Right. Here, it still gives me goosebumps. Wow. We didn't have the packaging yet. Yeah. The next trip, we had our packaging, and of course, we feature him in the packaging with a picture and everything. Okay. I'll show you that later. Okay. Yeah, he was sold. Wow. I mean, all right, so this is what we're going to do. And that's also one of our core values. We want to make sure that everybody we touch and everybody we work with gets their fair share of recognition and their fair share of, of the company. And, and so can we talk about that a little bit? You did share sure. that there are three tenants that are really, really important to you as a company. Oh, absolutely. And I, before I hear ex exactly, or we share exactly what those three things are, I want you to tell us why you felt it was important to have that level of a vision when it's a small company. You find that with small companies, people are like, all right, I have this thing, let me just try it. Maybe it'll mm -hmm. work, maybe it won't work. Let me just do whatever I can and then... It either works or it doesn't. It works, it doesn't, and we'll figure it out later. Right. But it seems like you guys started off with a lot of love and a, and a really big vision. So That's true. why was that important um, for you? It is, imp well, again, going back to working in the hotels, yeah. you see what's going well and, and how it does support a lot of people, but you also see where it can be improved. Right. You can see that, you know, you see the far farmers on the loading dock coming with their produce. Mm -hmm. You see um, in the gift shops, you see all this local art. Mm -hmm. um, and it makes you wonder, what can I do? Mm -hmm. For me personally, I always had, had a little bit of a struggle with, for example, these big buffets. Yeah. Yeah. And knowing that the food that was left over wasn't being put to a second yeah, use. Yeah, it thrown away, right? Yes, yeah. right. So what can we do to make a difference? And even if it's just a little drop on a big, big scale, I mean, I'd like to think that when I go to bed at night and I look myself in a mirror, that, that I can say, you know what, we've tried, at least we've tried to do the right thing. And that boiled down into our core values. Yeah, so, so, of course, the core values is to make sure that the farmer, Mr. Bodhi, Mr. Bodhi gets, and everybody, and, and everybody yeah. who might grow further, yeah. um, gets his fair share. Mm -hmm. What we actually do is we pay him above market price. Okay, wow. That works. That's a lot of people do that. And we do that. We do it very deliberately. There, yeah. There's a reason for that. Yeah. Because it's it's very simple. Mm. If you give him above market price and calculate that through into your product, yeah. He has a little more money in his pocket, so he can take better care of his trees, mm. and I get better cocoa better and products. and my pro yeah. It's that simple. Yeah. So that's been working. Mm -hmm. um, giving back to the communities, making sure that the people that work with us benefit mm -hmm. and, and creating job opportunities is, is the second point that is really important to us. Mm -hmm. um, how we have approached this is by taking a big part of the process uh, um, 
of fermenting and drying the beans and place that right in the middle of Spanish Town. So which on. makes no, <laughs> no sense, sense at all. Because Portland for products. Portland, yeah. Spanish Town. And then? Trelawney. Right, because you do outline it in your product and we'll talk about right. um, the inside and the design of your product, right. but you do take the time to mention that, yeah. Right, so what we've done is we've set up uh, fermenting and drying in, in that area just to make sure that the people benefit there. Mm -hmm. So we're creating job opportunities mm -hmm. and that's how we try to support the community. Right. Um, it's close to our hearts because my wife is from Spanish Town, okay. so we wanted to see what we can do there. Mm -hmm. Now, why Trelawney in production? Yeah, that makes no sense because we're racing all over the island. All over the, I mean, it's a very Jamaican product. It's, it's very simple. Yeah. I, I came, we came back, took a job in the hotels, and where are the hotels? North Coast. So you have to. Yeah. yeah. Um, it kind of benefited us because our product really works well in the hotels, mm -hmm. um, and it's the perfect souvenir to take home. Yes, of course. Um, and that's where our client base is. Mm -hmm. So that's where we really started. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, we worked our network to get the product out. So the first, first customers were my old employers. Hey, Chef Outer here, um, <laughs> would you be interested in you know, carrying my bars? Now, chefs give a lot of good feedback. Yeah. They know good products. Mm -hmm. And we knew that we were sitting on something really good. So the first thing you do is try to make sure that all these chefs taste your chocolate and fall in love and then the ball started rolling. So I, I want to touch on that point. Uh, a lot of times there's this push whenever somebody wants to do something or start something, they're like, you have to be formal. You have to follow these steps. One, two, three, four, five. Obviously you didn't. Obviously it's been working. Right. So which one of those steps do you, did you, did you do anything formal at all? Did you go through the whole business plan writing and all of that? Yes, yes? we did. Okay. But the funny thing is, and I believe that that's across the board, there yeah. is no standard checklist of starting a business. Now, yeah. that would be a fantastic thing to have. Mm -hmm. And we've, my wife and myself, we've discussed this a lot of times. Yeah. It would be fantastic if either a governmental uh, 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 agency or something like that sets up a checklist that says, all right, if you want to become an entrepreneur, think about these points. Okay. And if you work through that checklist, so if you want to produce food, here's your checklist. Yeah, you if you want to be a creative, here's a checklist. Make sure you think of this, because for us, we're really go, we had to learn everything, everything yourself, from scratch. Gut, everything. Yeah. All right, oh, and now somebody tells you to get, te get your product tested. All right, and there you run. Right. And now you need to find an artist, and there you run. Um, so if there's a checklist, that would make things easier. But we had to learn everything, everything on, our on our own, yeah. How Which is exciting, but it is, it is, you need to be determined. There, I mean, I can assume there are challenges because manufacturing is one of the most, well, people say it's one of the most difficult or more difficult industries to be in in Jamaica. There is a lot of inefficiencies. There are a lot of costs that come with it. Right. What do you think has been your biggest challenge as a manufacturer? Um, well, we're lucky with our supply, yeah. I mean, and our product is a very natural product. Yeah. There's no additives, no fuss, no, no, nothing unnatural to it, so it's easier to source. Mm. I mean, our chocolate, our dark chocolate bars are just cocoa beans and sugar, so you can't get it any more pure, pure than, than that. that. Yeah. Um, so we didn't really have any challenges with that. Yeah, you need to find your manufacturer for your packaging. Yeah. There are good options on the island. Oh. There are good options, but you have to look for it, yeah. Um, there are some, some groups uh, um, of, of entrepreneurs connecting and, and they do share a lot of information. So at this, yeah, I wouldn't say that there were a lot of challenges. You just need to be brave enough to ask. You need to be brave enough to ask, to stand up and say, hey guys, I got a question. Where do I go? On that point, completely on, on the side, there are lots of people who won't share their ideas when they have them. Did you find that, well, you said just stand up and ask if you have a question. What would you say to somebody who's afraid to share their idea? All right, that, that's a slippery slope. Yeah. Um, we did have instances where people actually took our product, uh, went into another store and said, do you want to buy this? Trying to sell our product. Now our product is so unique yeah. that everybody immediately told them, no, 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 that's not yours. We know whose this is. 
literally your... took our product wow. and started, well, tried to sell it and yeah. was immediately whistled back because everybody knew us. Wow. So it does happen. Mm. Make sure that you have your things covered, yeah. your plan covered, that you have it noted down, that you have your business plan, yeah. that you put your patents there where it's needed mm -hmm. so that you can protect yourself. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's two different ways. I, I wouldn't shout off the roof what your business plan is and how you're going to make money. Yes, yes. But if you have a finished product, that's the time where you want to expose Shout everybody. Yeah. You want to make sure that you work your social media, that you work your network, mm -hmm. work your family and friends, that you, that you get your samples into as much hands as possible right. and get feedback. Mm -hmm. Because you might think you've made the best thing on, on planet Earth, but, but if people. 20 people tell you that it's not good, then you should reconsider because it's not going to sell. Because in the end, it's about making money. Right. I mean, right. you can, you can, you can. Passion project it as much as you like. But in the end, the light needs to burn. Right. And we want to make sure that the people that we work with mm -hmm. can get their fair share. Yeah. Right. All right. So you brought up family. You brought up friends and family, of course, because it, it obviously is a family affair. Right. How, how is working with you know a significant other in business i've spoken to another couple and they're like yeah there are issues but it works how important is it to have a partner who is in it and has bought into it and is supporting it how important has that been for you guys it's the most important thing there is but as the other couple couple say you know but it's with any rel relationship you have your ups and downs yeah but in the end if you have the same goal and you work towards that goal it, it will work um you have your ups and downs, but let's be honest, if you, have, if you work for anybody else, gonna you're going to have disagreements. Yeah. So I, th I think it's comparable. Um, you might actually have a little more patience with each other because you know each other better mm -hmm. and you'd forgive a little faster uh, than if it's with a boss. Mm. Um, right. So yeah, it, it, it has its pros and its cons. I mean, I wouldn't have it any other way. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, it's okay to start business with your family. It's okay to start business with your partners. Yeah. It works. What I, what, what I would say is make sure that you make uh, agreements. Yeah. Who does what and stick to it. Mm -hmm. I mean, my wife is fantastic in, 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 in bookkeeping and numbers and she is a Super genius in that. Yeah. And I am horrible at it. <laughs> so I trust her completely. I ask her, can we spend the money? And she'll tell me yes or no. Right. And that works, that works. That's fantastic. So we've we've heard a little bit about the business. Taj. Can we talk Taj. about the product? We should. Yes. Not even before we get to Taj, because wow. his work the is product. all over. You have invested in a premium product as a small business. Like I said, a lot of people will just start up with something and just you know to see how it, yeah try a thing as we say and feel it out but you've gone all the way premium from the get-go why was that important for you why did you make that decision no. Let, let's be honest go in any um, gas station and you see the plastic bag with the sticker <laughs> yes you do yeah and that's fine I mean it, it has its charm in a way but you're not gonna sell a thousand of that overseas True. so our goal was to make a product or create a product that could stand next to any other international brand on the shelf and just happens to be Jamaican. So we flipped the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So instead of just putting a big Jamaican flag on it because everybody will recognize it and it will sell, we said, no, 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 we're gonna flip the whole thing. We're gonna go premium, high end, mm -hmm. and making sure that it, that it has that look. So we just flipped the script and it, it kind of works, yeah. I think it works a lot because <laughs> Personally, why we're having this conversation is that I was paying for something and I saw it and I was like, eh, what is this? So it definitely catches the eye and I think we'll get an opportunity to see the product up close, a lot of detail, a lot. You've taken a lot of time to highlight the people who are a part of the process as well. So and I think that goes back to one of your tenants. So how did you make that decision? This is very much Taj. Anybody who knows Taj Francis can see it. Right. Obviously, you've given a lot of creative freedom. Why, was, why are you able to do that? A lot of entrepreneurs are like, this is, this is what I want. This is what it should look like. And uh. You need to, I had to learn that. I yeah. used to be like that. Yeah. Um, still a little bit with some things, but I believe that you need to create a team around you mm -hmm with people that are better than you at the things that they yes. do and then let them do it. Right. 
and this is the result. I mean, we started with our top four bars. Those are our four, uh, the first bars, uh, four different types, um, where we approached Taz because we saw his artwork somewhere, we fell in love with it, and we said, all right, you know, we want to include an artist because we believe that for young artists on the island, it, it's very hard to get your work out there. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to make sure that we gave that opportunity. So we said, you know what? The idea was to make our chocolate bar a canvas to showcase their artwork right. and, and, and see if, if people like our chocolate, they become fan, fans of, of, of their work too. That was the idea. idea. And then we um, met Taj. We agreed to work with the first artworks. The outline of the packaging was done by somebody else. And then we were so happy with it, got so much good responses that when we were ready to create our, our second line of bars, the smaller bars, uh, that we said, well, Taj, please do the whole thing. You, had, you just had to keep the good talent no, to, to roll it absolutely. over. I'm, I'm happy you mentioned that you now have a smaller bar. You started off big. We are obviously, without a doubt, in a period where things have been difficult for a lot of small businesses. Yeah. You started off here. When did you guys and how did you guys make the decision to include a new essential, essentially a new skew, a new line? We had our, uh, well, our main clientele was, of course, the hotels right. and the airports and the gift shops where the big bars worked really well. Perfect, yeah. perfect uh, gift to take home. Mm -hmm. And then COVID hit. And then the price point of those bars kind of worked against us. Yeah. So we had to pivot. We have to pivot quickly. Now we were already thinking of creating a smaller bars, a smaller bars, a line of bars. We were working on it, but not that fast. And then, yeah, you get, you get knocked. So you had to speed up. So we did that really quick. Mm -hmm. uh, we worked really quickly with Taj, uh, with, the, with the printers, all local um, and, and pivoted into smaller bars and try to get that out there to make sure that we kept revenue going. Right. Um, and it was quite successful and it is quite successful. It works. People, people really uh, uh, go for the small bars and that's how we came to this line. So the flavors and the idea was already in the pipeline, right. but I, you could say that COVID really Spending speeded. Up. Yeah, we had to. Yeah. Okay, so you've managed to pivot in a time of COVID, which is a very big deal. Congratulations Thank on you. that. Yeah. A lot of people are struggling with that. We, you have how many, how many? All of these are separate flavors, right? You're doing right. eight. Right. So you so have eight thus far. Mm -hmm. We have eight thus far and then for now that's it. Um, um, we are working on something special for Christmas, but I'll touch on that later. So we have eight different bars and, and with bean to bar chocolate, it, it's normally indicated by percentage. So uh, we have a 68%. So 68% would tell you that it is 68% cocoa beans right. and the rest is sugar. Oh, Two okay. ingredients, nothing more. Okay. We even have an 84%. So for people who are really Super health conscious yeah. or want to uh, cook with it, that's mm -hmm. perfect. Okay. We have a 75% that goes beautifully with red wine. Oh, okay. We have a 70% with jerk seasoning. We have a, a chocolate bar with jerk. Oh, yes. Uh, jerk seasoning. Yes, we oh, have. Nice. We are pastry chefs. Oh, right. We are pastry chefs. So we are always tasting and, and testing. And, you know, it's a very popular thing to combine chocolate with spice. Hmm. Okay. All we did is, well, what's the most popular spicy stuff you can find in Jamaica? And that's jerk right. seasoning. Right. So there you go. And it works wonderful. Hmm. Um, and of course, that's the ultimate takeaway. That's the ultimate gift for any tourist. Right. Okay. Um, and then our smaller bars are again local flavors, yes, lemongrass, yes. fevergrass, yeah, fevergrass, coffee, coffee, which I had, love, there you, I love. saw that, Yeah. we have coconut, yes. this is our sweetest bar though, this is okay. a, because we also noticed that our clientele wanted something sweeter, mm -hmm. so this is our sweeter bar, this is a dark milk chocolate, okay, I'm yeah, excited. so that's a 57% dark milk chocolate with yeah. coconut, okay, now you won't find that coconut structure in there, you won't get these chunks of coconut, mm -hmm. You should try it. It's it's more elegant like that. <laughs> and then we have cinnamon. Definitely going to. And cinnamon. Cinnamon, cinnamon, right? Wow. And of course, you can. The artwork now was really specifically made for these flavors, yeah. and Taj was fantastically creative with how he did that. We'll definitely yeah. need to get some close-up. Yeah. Of the, the cocoa beans are in her hair. The right. Coffee the beans. coffee beans. The coconut is right there. Yeah. The cinnamon and a cinnamon roll is there, oh, and you yeah. have the fever grass yeah. going up right there. Yeah. Premium impact.
packaging creamy Absolutely. taste. Yes. As we close, tell me, uh, there are two things I want to know. Before you tell me about Christmas, I'm excited to hear what, what's in the pipeline for Christmas because right. there's a number nine coming, right? We're trying, we're trying. Yes, okay, yes, yes. all right. So there might be a number nine mm -hmm. coming. But closing thoughts. What is it that you know now that you wish that you knew then that you think would have made a difference for you? If I knew then what I knew now? Yes. Maybe one thing. I know Ooh. there may be a lot of things, but what's that, that big thing that you wish you knew then that you knew now? <sighs> How much money it takes to get where you are. <laughs> <laughs> but it's worth it. Yes. Because it's worth it, you know? Yeah. Plan ahead. Mm -hmm. Plan ahead. Mm -hmm. um, as you mentioned, you know, we did a lot of planning ahead. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm happy that we did because I know that if we didn't, mm -hmm. then we wouldn't have made it. Um, yeah, just try it. Just, just go, just, give, just it give it a shot. Yeah. yeah. And remember the money. And remember the money. <laughs> no, it's important. Well, right. love, sometimes love is worth so much more than money. Yes, it is. Yeah. Sometimes. No, absolutely. No, absolutely. No, as long as you have a passion for what you do yeah. and if you have a passion for your project. Right. And what is most important, a friend of ours told, uh, taught me that as well, is, you know, make sure that you keep on doing in your product, in, in your process and in your, in your company, mm -hmm. make sure that you focus on what you're good at. Mm -hmm. Don't try to do everything yourself. Focus on what you're good at because that's how you stay passionate about what you're doing. If you're trying to do everything else and, and get distracted too much from what got you in there in the first place, you're not going to have any passion for it anymore. It's going to bleed out mm -hmm. and it's going to stop. I, I, this is the kind of story that you would expect to watch on Netflix or HBO or something of the sort, but we had the opportunity to meet Walter Chertes. Very good. Perhaps <laughs> Rachel who has taken us through just a little bit of what has been involved in creating the magnificent product that is Pure Chocolate Company. They're, you can find them and their products island-wide, right? I think we can still go to you. Where can we find you? Um, Where can we find Pure Chocolate Company? Most of the Fontanas. Mm -hmm. You can find us in the high lows in the corporate, corporate area mm -hmm. and at your, at your delicacy stores like the Butcher Block, uh, Things Jamaica, uh, the Commissary, so that's where you can find us, yeah. All right, so premium product, will, with, you can find at some premium locations, but it's worth every single cent. I've tasted one flavor thus far. There are eight more. Well, there's seven more, possibly eight more that are coming. I'm excited for it. And we will see you next time with another Start Stories. Until then, start with what you have, with where you can.